Hello all and welcome to episode 35 of Enterprise Tech India Unplugged and we hope you are clicking on that bell button and subscribing on YouTube and subscribing on your podcast application where you can get our bi-weekly podcasts on a regular basis and hope you're finding all the top topics we are covering very interesting. And uh, please leave us a comment on LinkedIn or Facebook if you want to talk, want us to talk about something specific which you are interested in. So today, the topic which we are going to talk about is privacy in the enterprise. And uh, with us, we have Kumaran, who is the chief mentor and the uh, chief technology officer for Tiny Magic. Hey, Kumaran. Hi. What do you think about privacy uh, in the enterprise? Do you think do you think it matters? Because one is the, what is what what the enterprise is offering as a, as a uh, as this provider, what privacy it provides to its consumers. But what about the employees themselves? So, how do you look at these two perspectives? I think uh, <clears throat> for the external customers, it's a given. Right. I think it's uh, it's considered uh, as a given that a lot of privacy and a lot of discussions and thoughts around has been there on them. Okay, so that's good. Uh, I, I think it's fairly mature, but internal privacy is something which is an even trickier issue. Uh, let me give a specific example to begin with. Right, like let's say the easiest cases which I have seen is a tough. Let me talk with the tough scenario. Uh, I joined a company. They asked all my personal details. Okay. Uh, and as a part of my joining formality, I gave my PAN number, my social security number, my phone number, my email ID, my dog's name, wife's name, for whatever reasons, right? Benefits and things like that. I gave it. I joined. Worked with this company for five years. Okay. Now I quit the company and go. Should they hold my information or not? It gets tricky. Right. Okay. Uh, and especially it becomes even more trickier. Let's assume that uh, money is given to my children for education. Okay. Or it's given to, let's say they have a special scheme in which they can uh, give money for the spouse's education okay or health now so from a legal compliance perspective any money spent needs to have an audit okay now after i've quit my company these guys still needs to be financially accountable okay right but the spend of that, let's say $1,000 is actually for my spouse's education. Now, when I quit my company, who my spouse is, is my personal information. Okay, so this is where it gets very tricky. Now, currently, we don't have a mechanism. Most of the orgs continue to hold the data of the employees after they have left a gray area okay probably we can discuss about that right at the outset i would say when i quit my company all that is personal information from my uh, pan number to tax that company has no it's like when you quit a site right it will say i will delete all your personal information so something like that needs to happen over here but then there are other implications that comes about so that's one part the second is that this is more softish in nature. Even I'm within my company. If uh, so, it's very hard to remove. We can say we have an open culture. Uh, we don't. Uh, anybody can discuss anything, kind of a thing. But I guess it's against human nature to kind of be so open to, especially. Uh, negative feedback or negative comments or negative thoughts that arises. So when we want good collaboration to have, okay, for an organization to reach a state where they can freely comment, 
it takes quite a bit of time and effort. Okay. But one of the shortest way is we can create, let's say, uh, private or anonymous areas within the organization. So it's like one dark room, people will walk through it and there will be a board there and they can write whatever they want and go. Okay. So that is, that's another thing that could think of when you're, but as long as you're inside the company, whatever is, I don't think there are a lot of, lot many things, which is very private and probably that needs to be declared what is private and what is not. Okay. So somebody might say my spouse, my spouse name is private. It, I, th I guess it just needs to be declared and agreed hmm. when employees join it. You know? So when you join, this is not your private information anymore. This is our company policy. You like it, join. If you don't like it, don't join. Okay, so that needs but to be I, very expensive. But I think there is, I think there is now increasingly uh, expectation. It's an, there's an expectation of some privacy, right? So it's like if, if I... Uh, if I put some information on on uh, my, in my bank, right? Let's say I'm giving my information, some information to the bank, which is uh, like tax information and my uh, PAN number and all the other details about who is my nominee, et cetera, et cetera. All those things are, and I expect the bank to keep it private. And there is, there are, uh, if you go internationally or even, even within India, there is some, some expectation that the bank will not reveal this information uh, to anybody except for the people who need to know it inside the bank also right so so they have some some rules which govern them uh, 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 and i believe the the data privacy bill in india is still to be to be to be introduced and and not yet fully formed i guess but if you look at things like gdpr and uh, uh, and some some states in in US have have some uh, privacy uh, requirements for 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 how data has to be kept. So my my sort of question is: one is, are employees considered to be as users, just like let's say uh, users of Google would be or users of Facebook would be inside an enterprise? Do, should they expect that they should their data should be considered the same level uh, which Facebook should consider for its users? So, so, so should should that be the 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 base level which the enterprises have to start thinking about now? I think they need to they need to think like that. Okay, but principle wise, yes. Okay, but the details has to be worked out and i think it's each company's choice to what they want to make right like so for example if if a company chooses you know i would like to know who your spouse is or what the spouse does and there is a reason for it right we would just we don't want to be just people who are using you we want you to know you as a family not as an individual Okay, so that we would probably we can support them or something like that is what we would like to know. So I guess it's like the case is there, right? A couple of days back uh, in a known company, uh, the husband who was working committed suicide and died. Now the wife calls up the manager and then says, what do I need to know? Who do I talk to? What is the contact? What is the procedure kind of a thing? Now, if that information was there, the company could proactively say, oh, okay, my employee died. Who are the dependents? How can we help them? Is that dependent employed or not? So that company could have a policy that, you know, we will support. I'm just giving an example of where that information might be useful and can make sense also. It's not like I want to pry into your affairs, right? But I would like to know because I have a reason for it. But the, once it's made public, it becomes clear. But there's a lot more interesting, trickier thing. Let me just take a practical scenario. How I look, what is my facial expression? Is that private or public of an employee to a company? I mean, it's not, it, it's, it's not. Anybody private. in the employee, anybody in the company can look, especially when I'm working, 
anybody in the employee has a right to that information why is the video off why can't video on be made mandatory if you are in a company meeting there is no privacy your camera should be on you cannot say i am a private person i will switch on my camera <laughs> yes correct people feel like you are intruding into their privacy by switching on the camera no it's not an option okay so in that case i would actually say cameras cannot be switched off right mm -hmm. so is a way of uh, it, it it is a kind of privacy issue there mm -hmm. okay and especially in a work from home scenario but if you are working from home that space is office and you cannot be private about it right right so so you have to you have to consider yourself uh, uh, and your surroundings appropriately if you need to use a fake background or you need to use whatever you need to do you are you are expected to be seen yeah so i was bringing up that point to say that is not private mm -hmm. if you are in a office call that context that time mm -hmm. the house is private but the moment you switch on that space is not private to you anymore right right now this so, requires so, a just, lot more maturity just just this tri triggered a thought in my mind this is where does this, this concept of privacy come in right this is i'm just talking from more anthropological perspective rather than from the enterprise or uh, even technology perspective right so i'm thinking about as human beings do we really need privacy for us as a human society to function means is there is that uh, because if i if i just even go back a few hundred years let's say let's just say not even few hundred just take a hundred years back where most of us or our ancestors at least were living in villages right even if you today if you go to a village versus if you live in an apartment inside a big city in india the level of expectation of privacy in a village versus what you expect inside an apartment living inside the city is completely different in fact in a village there is no expectation of privacy at all in, the, in that sense <laughs> right it, it, and and the society still function it's not like the society stopped functioning and there was no progress and people survived everything worked in fact having privacy was a, a sort of a dangerous thing because if nobody knew where you were and what you were doing is likely that you were being uh, uh, in, in some sort of a dangerous situation where uh, you could not be protected by the rest of the society whereas consider now you are living inside an apartment or inside some layout or some some place where you expect privacy you don't want anybody to know what is happening or you don't want anything to be there whether you are in a dangerous situation or not nobody really knows right so i'm just thinking where have we come with all this expectation of privacy is it really required for the functioning see i i think let's take okay so that's actually an interesting point that you think we're getting to the for trying to understand what privacy actually means right so even in a village right even inside a house right there are things which is done like for example let's say there is a dress chain that needs you need to have a closed space there are a lot of things which is even in a village it is not done publicly okay there is a need for privacy even in a village okay um now so so even in a village privacy is needed and has existed that's what i'm just trying to say okay uh in the city also that is expected now the difference probably is that that degrees have changed like for example in the village if you go and ask uh uh is your husband working right how much is he feeding you three times a day right in village it's considered care okay did your children eat very simple question okay the neighbor sees the other person did your children eat today did you cook okay you do that in an apartment you'll see nosy neighbor 
Yes. How does it matter whether I cook in my house or I feed them or not? How does it matter to them? Okay, it becomes nosy. Okay. Now, why does the same statement feels nosy in one context, whereas it feels like care in another context? Same statements. I think as you're asking it, it triggered that it's the question of how vulnerable am I making self, making myself to be. Okay, it's a question of also safety. When somebody asks that question, do I still feel safe? Okay, so probably when a nosy neighbor asks, you don't feel safe, them asking that question. But in a village, you still feel safe. Okay, now safety could be physical, it could be uh, shame. Okay, like let's say I want to change my dress. Okay. I want to do it in a private space where others don't look at it because I don't want them to make fun of my body or whatever. So I need a private space to change my uh, dress. Okay. So safety can have multiple things. We won't get, we'll just keep it at safety. So I guess it's kind of interesting. So it boy, I, I would actually say privacy is related to how safe you make the employees feel. If you can ensure, so rather than telling, I have to determine privacy, we should actually probably asking the question, how safe do my employees feel? Now you level, you increase your level of safety, you can reduce the level of privacy. Okay. So, 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 so what, what do you, have, what we are saying here is that the the enterprises need to figure out how how to make the employees feel safe about sharing the information which they are sharing with them right and and they need to think in the same way so so in that sense let's say if facebook is facebook employees need to think of themselves as users of facebook as much privacy they are affording their users they need to be afforded uh, inside that that organization, and th those things apply uh, to 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 the employees as well as much as it applies to the users, right? So, so in in that sense, is there uh, so do does an enterprise need to think about this on their own? Do do the or enterprises need to depend on the laws to give? Uh, give them the input for how they should consider privacy or should be, and this is because a lot of multinational corporations uh, they they need to comply with laws in multiple regions right something which is considered means they have to go by the the most restrictive conditions right so let's say if today gdpr is the the most restrictive uh law which for from privacy perspective if if a if a multinational corporation is operating in multiple regions they just need to comply with gdpr it automatically sort of takes care of any lesser uh implementation of the similar laws so so as an enterprise should i just target let's say today let me just go with gdpr and we'll, we'll apply gdpr to our internal employees we'll apply GDPR to to our users for applications which we are producing because today like most most people, most companies are software companies they have they are collecting data from users doesn't matter whether you are producing mixer grinder juicer or you are producing uh, a Facebook kind of an application right so everybody has collecting data so so they need to go back and say okay we just go with GDPR or something even more restrictive. Is that the way for the enterprises to start thinking about it? Or should they, should they just go with the, especially for multinational corporations where, where they have employees in multiple countries and uh, doing that. Within, within let's say, a, a regional enterprise like within India, they have to just look at what IT law says in India and comply with that. I think that's not a choice. Mm -hmm. The legal compliance, you have to do it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's nothing to discuss on that. So the laws are. So my, my my question was not not uh, legal uh, compliance. My question was, uh, 
should you go with the most restrictive just because you may end up there or go with the least restrictive which is which is which you have to do the minimum so uh, going with the minimum viable into stuff. two parts i'll actually mm -hmm. split whatever you're telling into two parts right phase one or part one is compliance mm -hmm. there are certain privacy law compliances you have to be so there's nothing to debate on that nothing to discuss look at the books look at the laws implement everything you are done okay right okay so that's bare minimal and there's no choice there is what i'm trying to say otherwise right, you'll right. be an illegal entity right okay? right so that is a given beyond that right switch to safety how can mm -hmm. i make my employee feel more safer answer that question that will kind of give you more things on how much do i want to fail so privacy is my intention to be compliant if it's compliant stop with part 1 okay okay so 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 the objective if the objective is just pure compliance just go with what the law says but if the objective so so the safety perspective which you which you are defining where does that come from is where do you where do you bring the enterprises to start thinking about it who should be worried about it the values of the company it would the values I, I, would, of the i guess it would start with uh, what is the value of the company itself i guess publicly most of the companies say we want to have a open culture mm -hmm. yes they do mm -hmm. how how willing are they willing to go to back that up okay so um uh, to give an example right like let's say a town hall is happening okay mm -hmm. do i want to have a anonymous channel which will be running on the flow when the ceo is talking where people's comments can come directly over there mm -hmm. okay can i have that courage enough to do that okay so as he's making a statement the top comments and imagine there's a i mean i can go to the extent of telling like the uh, ceo of the company is addressing employees okay and i have have i can have something like a comments and a likes for that so the top rated comments will actually be shown on top do i have enough courage to have that that could be a benchmark right anybody can post a comment and to make sure that the top most comments right like this will not ever happen in my company somebody makes a comment okay mm -hmm. and 10000 of them because if it's a large company it will just be a feed nobody can actually see it okay so it's as good as not showing the information so you might actually say you know popular comments get pick if you like this comment click more so mm -hmm. there is a chance that one perspective will get built higher mm -hmm. so as the ceo is talking can you have a running panel it says top comment and it's ranking i mm -hmm. think that would be a great uh, test so so that that will be a test of uh, how how safe the employees feel Correct. with the information they are sharing and and uh, yeah means means lot of organizations have this speak up as a as a as a uh, as a thing which they want to talk, promote which says all employees are encouraged so to speak is, up that is I, i would say that is just a starting point again the real safety will actually come where they can say which employee told this and then the employee still feels safe this is what i'm telling is anonymous right anonymous actually means less safe mm -hmm. that means people don't have the courage to say in their own name or let me put it this way to make it generic the information that they want to share they are not comfortable with it that's why they want to do it anonymously right Right. Now, if I tie it back to if I know that my phone number or my email with my ex-employer is going to be safe, it will not be misused. I don't have a problem with that. It will be either used for my benefit or not used. It won't be used against me. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the that's the safety angle which you want to put forward. That the people should feel safe sharing that information with their employer, because Correct. the employer. uh espouses those values which you which you which will make you feel safe correct right so i think i think that's a uh, i think that's a good uh, 
I would say even a summary, if you want to call it that, how do you how do you implement privacy in an enterprise? Is in in one sentence is do it in a way where their employees feel safe in sharing the yeah. information which you want which you expect them to share, and and you are able to use it in the appropriate way. And there is no reason for you to be treating your employees differently than than treating your users or your customers' data. Right, so your employee data is is as sacred as your customer data. So do not treat your employees the way uh, any other way that they you own their data in a different way than than you own your customers' data. True, correct, exactly. So I think I think that that's a that's a good good place to end this discussion because this is a very short and uh, uh, pointed discussion which we wanted to have on privacy because today. A uh, lot of organizations don't think about privacy of their employees. They think about privacy about the their customers' data. And uh, what we are talking about here is you need to treat your employees' data just as sacredly as you would treat your customers' data. So thank you for listening in, and uh, we hope you keep coming back to us with uh, with with more interesting ideas. And uh, we we will coming keep coming back to you every two weeks. Thank you and see you next time.